Hello everybody, my name is Mike Guide, and in this video we are going to look at Parallax Backgrounds in Allegro 5. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, what exactly is a Parallax Background? And a Parallax Background is effectively a scrolling background uh, in which the foreground images move faster than the background images. This gives the illusion of 3D. Uh, it's, a, it's a visual phenomenon uh, seen in real life where you know certain things angle or move at different rates depending on the, the, the perspective of the viewer so we can achieve a very similar effect to that in video gaming and it just sort of gives a little bit of a depth to our 2D games here. So what I have is uh, some basic rudimentary code here I just have my width my height I'm doing 800 by 600 uh, my header files up here uh, none of these are new it's basically just some shell code uh, initializing black background, nothing really to it, just it's a very basic empty shellcode. Uh, and so we are going to use this shellcode and create for ourselves uh, a new struct we're going to work with for backgrounds, uh, some helper functions, and we're going to get some uh, some pretty neat stuff going here. So I'm going to get right to it. I'm going to go ahead and create myself a new struct. And this struct is in the same vein as uh, as uh, our, our sprite struct. A lot of this stuff is similar but there's no animation or anything like that and normally it would be in its own kind of class object, a background class object. But we're just gonna put this in a struct here and I'm gonna do everything in this instance in floats. Um, you don't necessarily have to because I'm not doing any any partial numbers here so there's nothing that uh, integers couldn't handle but uh, when I typed it out, I typed it out as floats so I'm gonna follow uh, follow my own example and leave them as floats. Alright, so we've got uh, just basically some velocities, some direction axis, direction y's, uh, width and height, just like so, and finally an image, just like that. Alright, great. And that's the, the whole uh, struct here. Space on position, how fast it's going to move, uh, its direction, which direction it's going to move, um, width and height, and image. Great. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and create myself my variable here. So I am going to, uh, well, first off, I'm going to create myself Allegro bitmap. And I'm going to call it uh, BG image or background image. Is it equal to null? Come all the way to the bottom and do al destroy bitmap and I'll pass in bg image. Awesome. Okay. And now that that's added, I'm going to come up here to my, my game variables and I'm going to create a background variable and call it bg. Right. Awesome. Okay, so that kind of gets our, our variables declared there. So let's Let's create ourselves a function to enable us to initialize our uh, our bit our background images. So I'm going to do uh, void init background, and that's going to this is going to kind of take the place of a constructor you would use for a class. Uh, we're just going to put a bunch of stuff in here. So it's going to be first off we're going to read in a background image. Uh, we are going to read in an int x and y. And I tell you what, actually, uh, I'm going to read in a float x and a float y since they're floats. Since I bothered to type them in like that, I'm gonna, gonna use it. Velocity x, velocity y, uh, int width, int height, and int direction x, int direction y, and finally my Allegro bitmap, which is just gonna be image. That is a lot in a function header, uh, but that's what we've gotta do. So I'm going to take this header, come on down here to the bottom uh, after my main, and I'm going to, let's go ahead and uh, type the code out for it here. So basically, I mean, it's pretty much what like we'd expect. I'm going to do back x, back dot x equal x, back dot y is going to equal y, back dot velocity x is going to equal velocity x, back dot velocity y is going to equal velocity y. No real shockers here. Back dot width is going to equal width. Back dot height is going to equal height. Uh, 
let's see here. Back dot direction x, direction x, back dot direction y, direction y, and back dot image stable image. You're gonna notice here in this example, I don't use velocity y, and I don't use direction y. Uh, we're just going to be scrolling on the horizontal, but I have those in here in my struct so that uh, if you're doing your own background in a different way, the variables are just there. Obviously, you'll have to modify my code a little bit to make it scroll in a different direction, but I just wanted the variables to be there, even though I wasn't intending on using them. All right, great. So we've got uh, this function here. So we can scroll back up to the top now, and let's go ahead and create our very first struct object and load everything in. So right down here, after I initialize everything, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, bg image equals al load bitmap. And I'm using these images that I created myself. Um, and they are uh, PNGs, so there's transparency built in. Basically, I'm doing a, a starry, starry space uh, background, if you will. I just used Photoshop, made myself some starry images, some planets, and whatnot. So. Uh, I will include those because they're ones that I made that I copyrighted or anything, so they should be on my website. And uh, and basically, yeah, and we'll we'll see how they look here. So I'm just loading this in. You have to use transparency so your foreground image doesn't overwrite your background image uh, or draw over top of it and black its view. So you got to use uh, either PMGs or you have to convert a mask color. Uh, I just made PMGs because they're easier. So that is going to load my background image, and then I'm going to just kind of call it knit background and I'm going to pass in BG for background, 0 for its X position, 0 for its Y position, uh, its velocity X. Since it's the background, it's going to be the slowest one, so I'm going to have it go one pixel per cycle. Um, it's not going to travel anywhere in the Y uh, direction. Its width is going to be the width of the screen. Its height is going to be the height of the screen. Now note, that's not always the case. I just happen to make these uh, background actually it'd probably be more accurate to just type 800 by 600 because if my screen size changes these backgrounds aren't going to change these backgrounds are fixed 800 by 600 so it's not variable so I'm actually just going to type out 800 by 600 because the background image is, is static you know I, I, I created the backgrounds of this image so if the screen gets bigger or smaller obviously things are a little wacky but uh, but this is the size I made these and, you know I'm not going to handle any stretching or anything like that for now uh, my direction is going to be negative 1 and 1, uh, so it's going to scroll to the left, and finally my image is going to be BG image. Alright, great. And that will that will initialize my object there. Awesome. Okay, so before we can see this, we need two more functions. One's going to update it every cycle, and then one's going to draw it. So I'm going to create the headers for those now. I'm going to do void update background, and that's simply going to take in a background object by reference. And I'm going to do void draw background. Once again, taking in a background object by reference, like that. Awesome. Copy these. Come to the bottom. Okay. Update's real easy here. Um, you're going to need to modify this code slightly if you want to scroll to the right or scroll up or scroll down. I'm simply handling the algorithm for scrolling to the left. Uh, because that's what I'm worried about in this example. So I'm going to do back dot x plus equals back dot velocity x. And you're going to notice this is pretty much the algorithm for moving any sprite. Um, it's going to be the velocity x times the direction x uh, is plus equal to the actual x position. Um, and that's going to move it to the left. So these are, these are handled pretty much just like sprites. Um, and basically we're going to say if back dot x plus back dot width is less than or equal to zero then back dot x equals zero. Now you'll have to note that our background can potentially be much much greater than our screen size or much much smaller than our screen size. So we need to treat these generically. We just basically need to say hey every time the screen gets to one end loop it back around. All right. Uh, so that'll update it just fine there. And finally, our draw function is going to look something like this. We're simply going to do al draw bitmap, and I'm going to draw a bitmap image or back image back 
I'm drawing it back at x, and I'm drawing it back at y, and 0 for my flex. Now, one thing that might be in your head right now is that, hey, we're drawing potentially a large portion of data off screen. Um, it's not going to matter. Uh, sure, we're, we're moving some data that we don't necessarily need to, uh, but it will look just fine. And to my knowledge, as of the time of this recording, and I'm researching it still a little bit, uh, unless you have a huge, huge background image, it should not be a problem. Uh, so watch, uh, watch my blog if, if I find out otherwise, because like I said, I decided to record this before I, I found out the answer to that question. Um, if I find out otherwise, I will update my post with this video um, and let you know. So just keep your eye on that. Okay, great. Um, also, real quick, we're only drawing the bitmap image once. We're actually going to come back and we're going to change that and draw it potentially a second time. We're only drawing it once for now, so you can see kind of what's happening, um, and then we'll come back and fix it. So my updates here and my draw is here. So let's let's go ahead and plug it in. I'm going to come up here to my my timer event. Uh, this is where my updates are happening, and I'm simply going to call updates background, and I'm going to pass in bg for background, and inside my render function, I'm going to call draw background, and I will pass in. Oops, and I will pass in BG. Okay, so we're going to run this and look at that. Now, obviously, yes, we have some, uh, we're, we're missing this here, uh, but basically, just wanted to show you what we're doing. Any second now, this is going to snap back. Bam, just like that. Okay, so that's that, that if statement. If, if the x plus the width is less than zero, uh, it says x is getting gradually more and more negative. Um, Eventually, the negative number will be greater than the total width, um, and so it'll be less than zero when they're added together, and, uh, and it'll snap back in place. So the key with our scrolling background now is to draw a copy of this background here, right? Uh, a copy of this background will fill up this space, this, this blackness here, um, and uh, the user will never know the difference. The user will never know it was two uh, images. So what we want to do is we only want to draw a, the background a second time if there's that black spot. Now, generally, there will always be that black spot uh, if your background image is the exact same size as your screen. However, sometimes your image might be much, much larger, and so that won't always be there. So we have to have basically an if statement. So I'm going to say if back.x plus back.width is less than width, this is the screen width. All right, so if it's less than the screen width, I'm going to do L, draw, bitmap, and I'm going to draw back.image, and this time I'm going to draw it at back.x plus back.width, and I'm going to draw it at back.y, and zero flags. Okay, so now when I run it, notice we don't have that, that black void here, right? The images are actually, the line is like probably right here now. Right, and so the user can't tell. At this point, bam, it's snapped back. But since it feels pretty, uh, pretty smooth, because the user doesn't know this is actually two images at once being being basically placed right up against each other. All right, so that's that scrolling backgrounds. But I told you we were going to do parallax backgrounds. Um, so that there's just basically a, one more thing to do here and that's to create two new background or two more background images and draw them as well it's really that simple once we have these functions figured out all we really have to do is then just add more right that's the, the power of generic programming so I'm gonna create a couple more background images here or background items here I'm gonna call background mg for middle ground and background fg for foreground and I'm gonna have Allegro bitmap, and I'm going to have an mg image equal to null, and I'm going to have an allegro bitmap, and I'll call it fg image equal to null. And since I've created those, I've got to come down all the way to my bottom here, and I'm just going to copy this, paste, paste, and I'll change that to mg, change that to fg. Awesome. All right. Copy this line of code here, paste, paste, and that's going to be an MG, that's going to be an FG, and oops, hit the wrong key there. Uh, 
that's going to be, oh, I'm changing the wrong one. There we go, MG, FG, awesome. Okay, so there we go. So that loads our images. Um, now we need to call this function here, the init background, which I'll just paste that twice, passing in MG, and passing in FG. Now this is important here, this is very important. All right, um, besides getting these right, this MG image has planets. I noticed that when it was only 600 or 800 pixels wide, it was the screen's width, it looked kind of stupid because there were all these planets really close together. So instead, what I did is I made it 1600. So this is actually twice the size of the screen, all right, which gives us a longer scroll length. All right, and also our, my speed, I want my backgrounds one pixel, or, or one pixel per cycle, speed of one. My middle ground is going to be a speed of three. My foreground is going to be a speed of five. Like I said with parallax, the closer objects, the foreground will move faster than the middle ground, and the middle ground moves faster than the background. All right, um, and so uh, we'll get this nice three D effect. Great. Uh, so they're initialized. We'll come down here and we'll just call the update functions, and I will go background, middle ground, foreground. Now before before we continue, one very important thing is the order in which we draw these. Okay, remember the first item down can be overwritten by the next item. So obviously our background has to be drawn first, then our middle ground, then our foreground. All right. If we drew them in any other order, let's say I did uh, foreground and then middle ground and background, what we'll see is that our our star, our, our planets, our back, our middle ground image would be drawn on top of our foreground. And our background would be drawn on top of our our middle ground, and it'll look completely opposite of correct. All right, because we're used to things looking a certain way when they move. These would basically move the, the items closest to you would be moving the slowest, and it would completely ruin the effect. All right, so uh, so prepare yourselves because uh, you're about to be amazed by this parallax scrolling with our images here, and we'll see it here. So there goes our planet. You can see the stars in the background are, are scrolling really slow, and the stars in the foreground are going really fast. And we have this really neat parallax scrolling. We get little particles in front of our planet here. This is actually the seam on my middle ground. When you see the big planet down here and the small planet up here, the seam is actually right here. So in the image, this little planet is on the left, and that big planet is on the right. I just have a loop like that, so it kind of looks like they're close to each other. In reality, reality, if I was making this into a game, I'd probably make my middle ground much, much bigger uh, with kind of different objects and stuff like that because this gets pretty repetitious, um, even even being double the screen width. Now, my foreground and my background doesn't need to be any bigger because it's nondescript. You can't notice that it's scrolling. Our middle ground is pretty easy to tell it's scrolling, um, but our background and our foreground is just dots. You know, the player. Uh, unless they really spend a lot of time studying your game, will never notice the repeat of your foreground and your background. But that middle ground is pretty obvious. Okay, so that is parallax scrolling. Um, that's everything you need uh, to to create some pretty awesome background effects for your games. Um, if I was making, say, a, a platformer, I would make my background scroll normally. I might have cloud scroll by and stuff like that. But I'd make like as my character was moving and he hits a threshold that's not the exact center of the screen, so he moves a little bit left or moves a little bit right. The background will scroll either left or right. Um, and remember, you're going to need to to write code to, to for your your background to scroll in the opposite direction. Uh, but it's pretty much everything that I did just reversed. So, uh, so that is parallax scrolling. And in our next video, we are going to look at tile-based backgrounds. So, uh, so stand by.